Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about how to configure your media interface in Windows environment. So um, since we've already quite a bit explained this earlier, we go to specifications on the product page and uh, you can see that we've got a little uh, limitation on a Windows side and in some cases it applies on a Mac OS. So, um, we need to do a little trick in Windows platform in order to make the plugin work perfectly within your door. So I've done a beautiful image in uh, Paint. So uh, if you have any comments, please drop them down and uh, <laughs> take it from there. Okay, so before we go to our DAW, uh, we need to make sure that we got all of the connections right. So let's say we are using the virus uh, KC keyboard or a virus TI keyboard with our PC platform. Um, we need to take out the MIDI from the virus and um, put it in a MIDI interface, MIDI in. Then we want to go and take uh, MIDI in and plug it from the MIDI out of your MIDI interface so that we get a direct connection um, either way. This is just the um, MIDI interface with a USB cable and we highly recommend to get something that is a bit more expensive than 20 bucks or 30 bucks because usually the cheap interfaces do not support system exclusive messages like they should. Okay, so once the connections are right, uh, we can move into the computer and there is an application called MIDIOX. So we recommend to get that one and also an application called um, Loop BAME Virtual MIDI. Let me have a look. Uh, loop Bay 1. So this is something you should definitely get. It's a free virtual MIDI driver. So we are going to need that one and also recording to MIDI aux. Uh, let's see. Yep, there it is. So download MIDI aux uh, 7.0.2 or whatever version is available for you. So we have a MIDI aux open after reinstalling and before we open MIDI aux we need to install the MIDI virtual MIDI driver, the loop bay one. So um, when the MIDI comes from, from the virus into your MIDI interface, uh, we want to take the MIDI aux application to handle the MIDI stream before the DAW. So uh, the MIDI comes from the MIDI interface or the synthesizer. Then we clone the MIDI stream within the MIDI aux application uh, so that it goes to the virtual MIDI out. From there it goes to the DAW and I'll explain in um, uh, Cubase Pro 9.5 how to set up the virtual MIDI so that it works properly. Um, then the MIDI comes from the virtual MIDI out, comes into the DAW, and you can choose the virtual MIDI um, port as a uh, triggering input port or whatever you want to call it. Um, then we can go to the DAW settings and disable these MIDI ports from the uh, door settings so that when we open up the editor plugin, it won't give you an error message. And once you've opened up the plugin, you can choose the MIDI in and MIDI out. So for MIDI in, we're going to choose the port where, where the actual synth is connected at. And same goes for the MIDI out. So we choose this port right here. 
And once that's done, it's going to make a connection into the hardware and and um, yeah. So, okay. Um, let's go to MIDI Augs first. I've done all of the installation for the virtual MIDI drivers, so they are installed it right here. And uh, I've got MIDI Augs installed, so let's have that open. And then we can go to choose the MIDI ports. So we want to take the loop by one internal MIDI. And in this case, I've got a virus connected in a micro light port five, which is a mod two interface. It's a really good MIDI interface. I really highly recommend to use that one. Uh, it's a bit pricey, but it's really worth it. So we take the MIDI inputs hit right here. We take the MIDI in from the micro light and we assign it into the loop bay internal MIDI. Then we can go to properties and untick all of these so that it doesn't handle any uh, common MIDI time code, MIDI clock, um, or system exclusive exclusive messages. And once that done, um, we can obviously test by playing the keyboard. So MIDI comes from here and it goes into the uh, loop bay internal MIDI. All right, now we can minimize this window, not close, but minimize. And let's head down to Cubase 5. Oh, sorry, Cubase 9.5. It's going to take a little bit to open up. Right, I'm going to create an em empty project and then I want to go to Studio studio setup and this is really important so uh, first of all let's go through all of the tabs uh, we want to go to MIDI MIDI port setup and we want to untick all of the ports where the actual hardware is connected so this is unchecked and also this one because we don't really need it but the secret thing is we want to enable the MIDI coming from the loop bay internal MIDI. So that kind of works as a input triggering for all of the VSTs and etc. etc. Uh, same goes with the MIDI out. So we want to choose uh, so that they are not visible in the DAW. Also, let's go to remote devices track quick controls and VST quick controls and make sure that the ports are not being assigned in here. Otherwise, it will give you an error. All right, let's insert the virus AG. And as we went on the installation video, we installed the plugin in the Mystery Islands music folder. So you get to see all of the plugins right here. Add track. And this is, well, kind of a information window before you proceed with the product. Um, first thing here, we go to multi settings, choose the preferred virus model, which is C in my case. And then we are going to choose the MIDI ports. So micro light port five. And since I'm using virtual machine, I'm actually routing my MIDI a bit differently, but um, you can do it as it goes for you. Uh, let's see, virtual, yes, this one. Okay, so now it's made the connection with the virus. Um, then we can go to uh, this uh, patch browser page and click sync data from hardware and it's going to fetch all of the patches or part data which is unmuted. So keep that in mind. 
if you want to get all of the 16 parts into the plugin, you need to unmute the parts first. Right, so now we can see that there's different kind of data uh, received from the virus. And if we want to play the virus uh, within the vi from the virus uh, keyboard, uh, we go and choose the loop bay internal as a MIDI input. So if we play the keyboard now, we can see that MIDI is coming from the loop bay internal MIDI, which we routed right here. If you close the MIDI aux application, it's obviously going to uh, uh, kill the connection between the real port no, sorry, this port and with the virtual port. So there we have it. So um, if you have any questions, please do so. And um, we'll carry on with the next video where, where we're going to be talking about how to configure the MIDI interfaces and ports in macOS. And um, yes, thanks for watching. See ya. Hi, so in this video we're going to be taking a little look how to configure the MIDI in and out for the virus AG in Logic Studio and for mostly in macOS environment. So uh, macOS is a lot different than uh, Windows because it allows you to connect your MIDI interface into several applications at the same time. So it doesn't give you an error if you're trying to make the connection be, uh, between the software and hardware even though the port is used in your DAW already. So I'm just going to quickly show this is my setup. So I've got Unita 8 uh, or actually I've got two AMT 8s which are daisy chained together. So it looks like it, it's got 16 ports. And then I've got Virus C, I and Virus C right here. So now if I go to Logic and I'm just quickly going to show you how I'm running the MIDI uh, in the Logic project. So let's make that a bit smaller so that it shows up properly. All right, there we go. And now if we go to environment open MIDI environment. Next we want to go to clicks and pods or click and pods. We can see all the physical MIDI inputs right here. So we can control uh, what data goes into the sequencer. So as you can see the sum of all of the inputs is going to come into the input nodes and it goes into the sequencer input. So what this means is if I play a key, it comes into the selected track. Let's say I create a multi-temporal instrument with eight parts, like so. Now if we go to uh, channel one and we play the keyboard, actually let's play it here, then it triggers the notes on this part as you've already been quite familiar with already. So with the virus HG plugin, if we are using virus KC, for example, uh, I've got a virus C desktop and uh, I'm using CS6X as my master keyboard. So I'm going to demonstrate with the CS6X how I'm going to filter the unwanted control messages uh, so that they won't pass into the DAW and foremostly so that they won't be passed into the plugin uh, two times. So first of all we want to remove this cable so that's on a secondary um, mouse button. I click that, it removes the cable. Now I'm going to go to new and transformer. 
that opens up this little funny box, um, which we can now call filter CC controls. And there we go. Now, if we double click that one, it's going to open up a new window. And there's a preset or mode uh, selected already. Apply operation, Apply operation and filter non-matching events. So what we want to do is go right here, choose uh, status equals nodes. So all of the node messages from all of the channels within all pitch range and velocity will be passed through and all of the other information is going to be blocked or field set. So next we go to this little tiny little icon and track a MIDI cable right here. Then we go to filter CC control and do the same to go with the input notes. So that makes the connection right there. Now if I play my CS6X, um, which in this case is virtually KC, I can see the nodes coming into my DAW, but if I move a knob, it doesn't give me any information passing through. So now if we install the plugin, um, mm -mm, let's see, there we go. Uh, virus 8C. And we're going to go to multi settings, choose the model, which is C. Then we're going to go to MIDI input and MIDI output. That makes the connection with the hardware and it's ready to go. Now we can synchronize the data from the virus. It's going to pick up all of the parts and um, uh, arrangement settings into the plugin GUI. Okay, so now if I would turn my knob in the KC, um, it would obviously come into this MIDI input, which is right here. So it gets processed in the plugin GUI. But also when we got this channel selected and the MIDI routing is um, coming from the KC, it's also going to bring the control changes um, in this channel if there is no filter. And that's going to cause duplicate processing on a plugin GUI and that's going to make the plugin to be a bit more sluggish. So uh, that's uh, one way of doing the MIDI filtering in your DAW. So this is just an example for how I'm using it in um, Logic Pro X. Um, if you use a different DAW, um, I would highly recommend to go into your DAW settings or manual and see how it works from there. Okay, so in next video, we're gonna go in a bit more detailed setup instructions for the virus C, uh, virus TI, and also how to put the plugin in your project. So see you soon. Bye.